While I'm always pushing for the world I want, one where I can use open source software and easily modify all the hardware, I also have to deal with the world the way it is. Which is why when it comes to video editing with DaVinci Resolve, moving to a Mac Studio M4 Max really surprised me. Now, don't worry, I haven't abandoned open source. I still believe in building systems you can tinker with, repair, and truly own. But sometimes finding the right tool for the job puts me up against the open source world I want and the reality of the way the world is. And I need to make some changes to create a smoother, faster workflow that helps me get videos done more effectively and if a system lets me spend less time troubleshooting quirks and more time editing and publishing, that's a tool that earns a spot in my studio workflow. Now there are lies, damn lies, and then there's benchmarks. And you can find lots of people who have posted those benchmarks online about these systems. I want to focus on my real world use case in comparing these. My Threadripper Pro 3955WX that has 64 gigs of memory and NVIDIA A6000 with 48 gigs of VRAM is very fast. And I mean like really fast. But comparing my real-world performance of that system using a Mac Studio M4 with 14 CPU cores and 32 GPU cores running DaVinci Resolve tells a different story, especially when you factor in the responsiveness, thermals, wattage, renders, and cost. Now, I will first point out that I do my own rating, some of my own stunts, and definitely my own editing. My editing is pretty simple, basic 4K workflow with all the videos living on TrueNAS. To make this test as fair as possible, I load the two systems up with exactly the same project, which means it's edited exactly the same video with the same files being pulled from the same NAS at the same speed, just a 10 gig connection. The Threadripper rendered a video in 5 minutes and 41 seconds the first time and 5 minutes and 43 seconds the second time, probably because I had OBS running to record this and the peak wattage while I used the rendering was just a bit over 400 watts. Versus the M4 Studio did it in 3 minutes and 5 seconds while leaving my browser open and a few apps running. The 3 minutes and 4 seconds was with all the apps closed and the entire peak wattage really never went above 115 and it mostly stayed below 100 watts. Now, my two reasons for making this video is first, because a lot of people are getting more into content creation, and that will lead them to needing to figure out what is the best value for that workflow. And I never thought I would say this. Apple right now, here in November 2025, has a big advantage, not just on performance, but price when it comes to video editing. The second reason, and maybe I'm overthinking this, is that I know some people are going to ask if using a Mac means I've gone all in on the Apple ecosystem. The short answer is, not really. I'm only using it for video editing and occasionally my little M1 Mac Air because I hate using my phone to reply to messages and this is very portable and has good battery life. One day I'd love to get Linux on it, but that's a project for another day. For now, the Mac Studio is simply the right tool for this job. Now I wanna hear from you. Are you surprised that for this specific use case, the M4 Macs turn out to be faster and cost less? I'm surprised, but are you? Drop your thoughts and comments down below or come join a longer discussion over my forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com and you can always find all my links, socials, and shirts over at lawrencesystems.com. Thanks.